to Pilates. This is Met Pilates. So what that means is we're using our own body, no equipment needed at all, just a yoga mat. And if you have an extra thick mat, I would recommend that over like a thin yoga mat. It just gives you more cushioning. Please take any breaks you need at any time. Listen to your body always. Also, always be breathing. All right, we try not to hold our breath during Pilates. I'm gonna be giving modifications um, and hopefully one of them will work for you. I'll try to talk through every modification possible. Um, and then if you also have been taking Pilates with me regularly and you know the version you wanna do, if it's like you wanna go right into the advanced version, feel free to do that. Cause again, you know what you're in this class for and what you want to accomplish. Um, generally speaking, the, the things that are, are the most tender or that we're most worried about is neck and your lower back. So if you have any neck problems at any point, keep your head down on the ground. If you have any lower back pain, keep your feet on the ground. Okay, and then just drink water, if I didn't mention that already. Let's go ahead and get started. Again, you can pay, play your music, so you don't have to, um, I'm not playing music here, so that my voice can be heard through Zoom. And you guys can play anything you'd like in your living room and bedroom. Let's start with our Pilates breath, inhaling through the nose, exhaling out through pursed lips. Inhaling nice and deeply, and exhaling as you're blowing cool air on hot soup. Inhale, exhale. Good, you wanna establish this nice, slow, steady pace of breathing. And we want to try to keep this pace throughout. So if you're, if you're already sitting kind of relaxed, let's start to engage our muscles a little bit. So in the spine, we inhale, lengthen, reaching through the crown of the head. Exhale, draw the abs in, as if you're tightening the belt around your waist. Inhale, lengthen, exhale, draw in. Sometimes when we draw in a little bit, there's a little bit of curve in the spine. That's why you want to inhale, lengthen again. Exhale. One more time, inhale. On this next exhale, draw in the belly. Start to round the spine. Your feet are hip distance apart, flat on the floor. And just keep them there as you roll down. Feel free to take your feet in a little closer to your butt, but they should still be hip distance apart. Inhale through the nose. Exhale out through the mouth. Inhale. Exhale, allow your abdominals to sink downwards towards your spine. Inhale. Exhale. Good, a couple more. And exhale. We're going to imprint that lower back, so just tucking the tailbone, well not tucking, actually you want to press your lower back into the mat using your abdominals and lift the tailbone off the ground. And from there, we're going to lift the legs up. Make sure you have your legs lifted in the air, you want to have an imprinted lower back, which helps to keep the spine more stable against the floor. Exhale, one of the legs is going to reach toward the floor. We are not going to straighten the leg. It's going to stay bent at 90 degrees. This is very slow movement with the coordination of your breath. So whenever I'm in doubt, I move slower. Exhale to lower. Inhale to lift. So just keep alternating that breath. Exhale lower. Inhale, lift. Notice that my knee that isn't moving stays right over the hip. One more time on each side. Feel free to press into the floor with your hands if you need a little more stability. And now all 10 toes reach down. Don't feel obligated to take the toes all the way to the floor. First, just go maybe halfway down. Make sure your lower back doesn't arch off the mat. 
if you aren't feeling your quads and your abs as the legs lower, check your knee angle. Your knee angle is less than 90. You're not going to feel much of the abs or the quads. You really want to aim for 90 degrees. Good, last one. And now go ahead and lower your feet all the way to the ground. They're still hip distance apart. You can slide your feet a little closer to your butt for your shoulder bridge. Start to press through the heels and roll those hips up, lifting the spine one inch at a time off the ground. This is your neutral straight line from shoulders through hips and knees. Inhale and exhale. Roll your way back down one inch at a time. Good. So your spine is made up of what? Any vertebra, plural is vertebra, singular vertebrae, no, singular vertebra, plural vertebrae. <laughs> so one vertebra at a time. You can kind of imagine they're like links on a chain. And your spine doesn't actually move that way, but if you imagine it, it'll help with what you're trying to do. Okay, crutches. Inhale, prepare. Exhale. Lift head, neck, and shoulders, reaching toward the toes. Inhale, hold. Exhale. Lower back down. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. I'm just alternating my breath. Inhale on the ground. Exhale to lift. Eye gaze on the knees. Inhale to hold. Exhale to lower. You should feel your abdominals working as you slowly lift the head, neck, and shoulder blades with control. Not throwing our arms up. Not like throwing our head up. It is very, very controlled. Bringing the rib cage closer to the hips. Good. We're going to do hundreds, which is a crunch position. Your palms are facing down and you pump your arm a hundred times. And basically during that time, you're trying to keep your abs as stable as possible. I'm going to start with my legs in tabletop position, but feel free to keep the feet on the ground at all times. Okay. I'm going to change my leg position throughout. Don't feel obligated to change it with me. I'm going to go from this position to straight to the diagonal, okay? And you can pick any position you like. Nod the chin, lift the head, neck, and shoulders. Palms are facing down, and we pump. Inhale, two, three, four, five. Exhale, two, three, four, ten. Inhale. Exhale. Twenty. Inhale. Exhale. Drain the legs. Inhale. Exhale. 40, inhale, exhale, 50, inhale, exhale, lower the legs on the diagonal if you want, inhale, exhale, 70, inhale, exhale, 80, inhale, exhale, 90, last 10, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, hug knees in, and flip over onto your stomach. So for our spine work, we're basically lifting up into this position, but don't feel like there's a certain height you must reach. Start with arm support. Feel free to glance at me to check my head, neck, spine alignment. And then once you've seen how the form is done, I want you to look at the floor. Tuck the chin slightly. Imagine there's only enough space under your chin for a raw egg. You basically want to cradle that raw egg, right? You don't want to break it by jamming it down with your chin. But you also don't want to look up because you would drop the egg and that too would break the egg. So essentially, you don't want to break your raw egg. 
Inhale to lift. Exhale to lower. Good. Now the forearms are on the floor from fingertips to elbows. So gently press into those, the entire forearms as you need. Tops of the feet stay on the mats. So I'm gonna change my arm variation and reach the arms toward the toes. I'm gonna widen my collarbone and feel your shoulder blades squeeze together. Good, same thing, lower and lift without dropping that egg. Lower, lift. Generally, we inhale on the lift, but it doesn't matter. If you wanna exhale on the lift, that's perfectly fine. Yeah, let's try one more arm variation. Adding the stacked hands underneath the forehead, lifting the weight of the arms. Good, so in the first version, you were giving your spine support. In the second version, you took away that support, but you're using your arms as an assister. It's reaching toward the toes. And the third version, you're now using your arms as resistance, as weight. Good. And that, I actually really like this last version because it guarantees your head is aligned with your spine as long as your forehead is in contact with your stacked hands. Go ahead and take your hands underneath the shoulders. Push yourself up to a where you're sitting on your heels and stretch your back. So this is an active stretch. I'm creating expansion and breadth and width across my back. I'm separating my shoulder blades. So this is very different from child's pose where, this is child's pose where your chest is right on your thighs. Here we want to create a round shell around a beach ball. All right, come to a seated position. Gonna have you have your palms facing inwards, almost like you're you're hugging a tree. It'll be like imaginary tree huggers right now. Your feet are hip distance apart, and you're gonna exhale as you roll halfway back. So stop right there. Inhale, come back up. You can lengthen your spine as much as you'd like. Exhale, feel the abdominal work here. Inhale. Now see how this feels for you. You don't want to go all the way down, just until the tops of your pants. Shoulders, they stay down and relaxed. Notice if they're creeping up toward your ears. Now we're gonna add some arm variations, which are completely optional. As I roll back, I'm gonna bring my one arm to the diagonal. Back to parallel. The other arm on the diagonal. See how that feels, if that feels okay. Next version, as we exhale and go back, arms go by the ear, pretty much vertical. Back to horizontal. Other arm, try the vertical. We're still trying to go back to the same position we were, whatever position that was for you. Now I'm gonna have you just keep alternating the arms if you are choosing to move the arms. If you're keeping both arms straight in front of you, that is perfectly fine. And if you don't wanna take your arm vertical, notice that the first time I did on the diagonal, so sort of the midway point. By changing the position of your arm, you change how much work is felt in the abs. So you can also imagine what it would feel like if both arms were moving. Let's, do, let's finish up on this side. And then if you would like to try a couple with both arms, feel free. The furthest the arms will go will be by your ears. It can go at any height in between these two positions. Okay? All right, once you've finished with two or three or four, you can roll all the way down. We're going to do leg circles, so you keep one leg bent, 
Strain the other leg. This is really great for working on the quad muscles, which support the kneecap. If you have any knee injuries, this is really great. You want to keep engagement in the leg muscle throughout the circling. You're going to inhale at the top of the circle and exhale at the bottom. So wherever you choose as your 12 o'clock, which is as close to the head as possible, and then wherever you choose for your 6 o'clock. I'm pointing my toes, but you can flex your feet and draw circles with your heels. You can make your circle as big as you like. So I'm just going to reorient myself here for a moment. You can make it barely cross over your knee, or you can really cross over the midline. You can go as far out to the side as you like. However, you don't want to go so far that your body tilts over. All right? So just use your abs to stabilize your body. It's about making the biggest circle you can make. Let's reverse direction. So everybody's reversing direction. It's about making the biggest circle you can make while keeping the rest of your body still and stable. We are working on increasing the range of motion in our hips. We are increasing the strength in our quadriceps and hip flexors. And we are stretching our hamstring. So as you pull that leg up, hamstring stretches. Last one in this direction. Pull it as high as you can. Keep your leg as straight as you can. And now hug the knee and relax. Rotate those ankles. Reverse direction. Okay. Out of the leg. Find your 12 o'clock and start to circle. Inhale, exhale at the six. Your hands are pressing down to the floor, which helps stabilize, but you don't really need your hands if your abs are nice and engaged, keeping your body from rocking side to side. Again, find your greatest range of motion in the leg circles without disturbing the rest of your body. And by the rest of your body, I'm also talking about the other leg. So sometimes our whole, our torso and above doesn't move, but as our leg swings out to the side, our other leg, our, if especially if the knee's bent, it like moves to the other side to counterbalance the movement. Reverse direction. Always be breathing. Fight to keep that leg straight. By the end of 10 circles, about five in each direction, I'm sure we did more than five in each direction because I can't count, but by the end of these circles, your leg muscle should be pretty fatigued. Let's hug the knee in and rotate. Yeah, we're gonna make circles with both legs. I'm just going to turn my body here so that you can see it. You don't want to make the circles super big, um, but you can make it as big as you like. This is less of a circle here. It's more like two capital D's. You draw down the spine, you separate, semicircle, back up. So pick a direction. So maybe you're starting at the top and you're going down the middle, opening up those hips. A little straddle, a little stretch of the inner thighs, abs definitely engaged, lifting those legs back up. So you can decide how low you want the legs to drop before you circle back up. The, the closer it goes to the ground, the more challenging it is to the abs. Well, some of you guys are super flexible. You're trying to keep your legs straight. Yep, that's good. So maybe about five or six in each direction. So if you're going down the middle and out to the side and then coming back up, now you first are gonna go out to the side, squeeze your legs together, then bring them back up. So this is not just a quad hip flexor exercise, it is also your abs. And I'm pretty sure you guys fill in your abs. 
So once you've done about five or six in the other direction, you can hug your knees into your chest. All the way into your chest. Good, we're gonna do a single leg stretch. You might feel a little more hip flexors here, but you're not gonna feel as much quads because the knees are being hugged in and you're taking a break. So exhale to reach, inhale, switch, exhale, reach. If you'd like to lift the head, neck, and shoulders, you can do so now. I'm looking at my knees. Exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. I'm very tempted to want to speed up my leg movements, but I'm going to try to keep my breath slow, and I'm going to move with my breath. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale, hands behind the head, continue. Inhale, exhale, add a slight rotation. Looking towards the bent knee. Be careful here not to over rotate. What I mean by that is you don't wanna yank this elbow all the way across and roll across your shoulder blade. Think about your shoulder blades being center and then just lift one a little higher than the other. Lift one a little higher than the other. It is much less rotation than you think in the torso to actively recruit the obliques. In fact, sometimes when you over rotate, you take away some of the work from the obliques. Good, keep those elbows nice and wide. Inhale, exhale. See, this is why I think my voice might make some of you fall asleep. I'm just like, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. It's meditative. Okay, double leg stretch. Head back down if you like. Legs stay together. Arms and legs reach on the diagonal in opposite directions. Now, if you have any lower back pain, you don't need to straighten your legs all the way straight, but you can also straighten it more vertically. Know that the more straight your legs are and the lower they are to the ground, the more challenged the abs and infants. Head, neck, and shoulders up. Same thing. The arms will go to where the ears are and the legs can go wherever you like. Exhale, reach, inhale, pull in. When my knees come in, I'm stopping right over my hips, tabletop position. Last two, last one. Good, we're gonna do a variation of scissors. We're gonna add some pulses. So usually I just switch, switch, switch. We're gonna have one leg up and the other leg, and you're gonna do pulse, pulse. And what I want you to think about with the pulse, pulse is this leg, the top leg pulls, pulls toward the head and the bottom leg reaches, reaches. So it's like far and farther. Okay, so here we go. You're still breathing the same way. Inhale here, exhale, exhale. Just two short exhales. Inhale. Inhale. It's the same exhale, you're just kind of breaking it up. Think. Reach, reach further. Pull, pull further. Reach, reach further. Now you have your hand on the top leg, which can help with the pulling a little bit, but don't yank too much. Be kind to your hamstrings. Exhale, exhale. Pulse, pulse. Reach, reach further. Toes are reaching away from your hips. So the vertical leg is reaching up away from the hips. The bottom leg is reaching away, away from the hips. <laughs> All right, that's good. Plug those knees in and flip over onto your stomach so we can stretch our abs. We'll let it rest for a moment. Okay, whenever we're on our stomach, you'll notice that we are working our spine and you probably also notice there's not that many cool ways we can work our spine. I mean, yeah, okay. So what we're gonna do for this is we're gonna have our arms and legs reaching out to the corners of the mats. And we're gonna lift right arm, left leg. When it goes down, the other two limbs are gonna go up. So it's a simultaneous switch, switch. 
Sitch. Sitch. So my chest kind of has like a certain height here. Like I'm not down on the, I'm not down on the ground and my arm is trying to lift up. I'm actually already lifted. So there's a lot of spine endurance in this exercise. Switch, switch. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. So that's a really good pace that you can totally stick with. If you want to speed up, this is what we call swimming, you can do so, but don't speed up your swimming. You just speed up the pace of your movement because your spine is still lifted no matter what. So it looks like this. Inhale, inhale, exhale, exhale. Inhale, inhale, exhale, exhale. So it's two switches per breath. Inhale, inhale, exhale, exhale. All right, so that's just speeding it up a little bit. But you're still going to feel in your spine the whole time because your chest stays up and your limbs are just moving faster. Don't feel obligated to do that faster pace. You can switch on the inhale, switch on the exhale. All right, a couple more. Like maybe two more breaths. Two more inhales, two more exhales. And I want you to sit back and stretch. So that's a little bit of coordination you do want the opposing limbs moving at the same time. All right, we're going to do um, some planks. So I'm going to start with the side plank first since that's a little more on the challenging side. If you've never seen this move before, no worries. It's just a little more choreography than your typical side plank. So you have a top leg and you have a bottom leg. My top foot's ankle is in front of the bottom leg's ankle. So you can just mirror me. Yeah, if you had your phone there, you might have to move your phone here. All right, so we have my arms here ready to go. If you have any wrist sensitivities, you can do it on your elbows. So what would happen is uh, you might have to move your legs out further because when you lift, you're coming to here, okay? But when you're on your wrist, you can be a little closer because as you lift the hips, you're coming to your side plank. All right, let me show you a couple options first. First option is you come to your bottom knee. All right, that doesn't take, put all your weight on your arms. Actually, I need to move my arm in a little closer. So when you do your first one, it's sort of an experiment because you gotta make sure that the wrist is mostly under the shoulders. If you actually put it too far out, adjust after your first one and then keep it there. So now you know, if my feet are there, my arm is there, I'm gonna do a good plank. Right, here we go, inhale, prepare, exhale, lift. Now I want you to bring the arm over by your ear. There you go. So you're probably used to lifting up like that, which is totally fine, but this is just a variation. I'm really feeling that length. And we're gonna come back down. So try to put your butt where it started. Inhale here, exhale, reach. Actively reach, inhale down. It's okay if you're a little arched, a little curved here, because you're pushing with those obliques to lift the hips, so that's what works. Inhale, exhale. So just exaggerate it here. I'm really pushing up like that, and that's okay. More stretch here, more work here. So this only applies to side planks, because if you're doing regular front planks and your butt's really high, you actually take away the work of the abs. But here, when you push up higher, you do more work with the obliques. Let's do one more. Inhale, check out the wrist if you need to, but put it back where it was, and then exhale. Good. All right, now that we know what's happening, we're gonna do it on the other side um, with less breaks, less talk. So top leg, ankle in front of the bottom. The first one, we're gonna have to figure out exactly where we're gonna play, place our hands. Here we go, inhale, exhale, reach, rainbow. Inhale, sit back down. Adjust your arms if needed, exhale, reach. I'm squeezing my legs together, I'm actively reaching with my top arm. Inhale, I'm sitting back down. Again, if you're doing this on your elbows, that's fine. Exhale, you're just gonna have to adjust your feet so that you can get into a lengthened position. Inhale back down, we're gonna do one more. 
Exhale, lift. Good. Shake out those wrists. We're gonna do a regular plank on our elbows. So give those wrists a break. This is a regular plank facing down. This is how we're gonna get into it. We're gonna think about all the muscles that are engaged. First, get your forearms firmly planted. Your elbows are underneath the shoulders. The elbows aren't here, on that far back. They're not this far forward. Right under the shoulders, tuck the toes under. Now, before you start lifting your hips, I want you to engage your quads. So this is relaxed quads, engage quads. See how my knees just pop up nice and straight? Thighs are really, really engaged there. And then before you lift up, I want you to squeeze your butt. So even before we've lifted up, quads and butt engaged, now draw your abs in. Start to lift with your abs. Abs nice and tight. Good. Shoot a little bit past your flat plank position. See how your body feels? If it feels quite challenging to you there, stay there. If you don't quite feel this challenge, let's start to lower down a little bit more. And usually at some point when your hips are about the same height as your shoulder, this is where you really feel your abdominals. Hold it right there and breathe. If you go a little too low, you're gonna to start to feel in your lower back and you're gonna feel it less in your abs. So what do we have? We have our quads, our butt, our abs, our shoulder girdle muscles, forearms pressing to the floor, all of this is engaged. Last breath. I hope you guys are breathing this entire time. Inhale and exhale. Good, come on down. We're gonna lay on our back. How's everyone doing? Shoulder bridge position. Let it be this position. Taking away the articulation. So no more of that chain linked uh, vertebrae thing. Okay, so today is, we're gonna do, we did a leg circle thing, so we're just gonna kind of keep that thing going. So you guys have already seen this before. So let me just turn here. When you lift your butt, you're gonna straighten one leg. You're gonna make a circle here on the diagonal, and then you're gonna lift up and make a circle vertical. All right, we're gonna make six circles. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then leg down. But, but do anything you want to do. <laughs> These are just suggestions. All right, ready? Lift those hips up. Doesn't matter which leg you lift first. This is my right leg going up. So if you're mirroring me, it's probably your left. So uh, you lift up my leg. Vertical circle, one. Don't make the circle very big. Take it down. Two. Lift it up. Three. Feel free to reverse it, but it's such a small circle, not a big deal. Take it down on the diagonal, four. Lift it up, five. So again, these circles are really small. It's more just like you're creating. Okay, go ahead and bend your knee and place it down. So the idea behind this is you're creating just perturbance or disturbance. You're creating sort of movement so it challenges your abdominals and your glutes to maintain the stability. All right, so it's any movement you want. In fact, if you're not good at drawing circles, you can draw another shape. Lift those legs. I mean, lift the butt. Leg goes up, circle, for six, on the diagonal, abs tight, lift butt, five, four, three, two, and one. Good, bend the knee and come down. All right, how does that feel? Uh, because what I do want to do for the next round is 12 circles, which would be one in each direction before we switch height. Okay, if you feel anything in the lower back here, you can lower your butt a little bit. So sometimes if you push your hips high, it starts to sink right here. So butt tight, abs tight. All right, go back to your first leg, please. Good, two circles up on top, one in each direction. Inhale, first circle. Exhale, reverse direction. Lower the leg. Try to keep your hip height the same. Two circles, one in each direction. One, two. 
Take it back up. One, two. Lower back down. One. So there's a lot of endurance for the remaining leg and butt cheek that's on the ground. One, two, constantly breathing. Last two, inhale, exhale. Bend the knee, place the foot on the ground. Lower your butt, reset. You good? Let's go, legs up. One, two, I should go ahead and count to yourself because I am probably counting at a different pace for every single person. When your leg is on the diagonal, your knees are still close to each other. You don't want the leg lower than your uh, bottom knee. Very good. When your leg is up, you want to try to get as close to vertical as possible. It definitely works your quads and it also stretches your hamstring. Okay, so it looks like everyone's about done. So if you feel any pain in your lower back, just hug your knees in a little bit. Good. So we're gonna do rolling like a ball slash rocker. So rolling like a ball is this part where you're rolling like a ball and rocker is where you stop the motion. So like a rocking chair, well, I don't know why it's called rocker, but what we're going to do here is we're going to roll back and then we're going to lift and strain the legs to decelerate the movement. All right. So before we get too freaked out about that, you don't have to strain your legs completely. Let me show you the crunch. Remember the crunch? Like this? We did crunches in our warm up. You're going to use the crunch muscle, your abs, to roll yourself up. So I'm not gonna kick my legs out. I'm gonna crunch. So crunch, crunch, crunch. See how that starts to generate momentum? I fall back with a round spine. I crunch, crunch. Now, if your hands are on your shins, which mine are, I'm gonna actually move it to my hamstrings because at some point, when you come all the way up, you don't want your feet to touch the ground. So you're gonna, Come all the way up and pause in your V or bent knee V. What happens here when you fall back? If you pull your knees in, you're just going to fall. What you want to do is you want to draw the abs in and kind of let your abdominals or your belly button drive the initiation of the fall back. So drive the initiation to fall back, front your way up. Inhale here, bent knees, exhale, lift, hold. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Keep your spine round. So this is a little tricky, mostly because it's so easy to rely on momentum and bypass the abs to do exactly what I'm doing. But you want to figure out for yourself where you're actually using your abs to crunch your way up to initiate rolling down. Yes, gravity pulls you down a little bit, but uh, you can't just like give in to gravity because you have to eventually come back up. That makes sense? Okay. So now that we've done that, let's stay in our open leg V and focus on our quads, abdominal endurance. So this is just the latter part of the open leg rocker. Uh, I don't know if you guys can see, but my legs are about hip distance apart. Good. Still breathing, exhale, inhale, exhale. Shoulders stay relaxed. Good, now let's see if we can strain our legs as much as we can, both of them, and then come down. Both, and return. And then final little challenge here. It's okay if your legs are a little bit bent, 
We're going to do a crisscross. So again, if your knees are a little bent, that's okay. Still works. I'm going to go back to the bent knee version a little bit. I'm going to show you if I take my hands away, what happens. What happens when you take your hands off your legs? Well, you can tell me how it feels. I'm not on my back. You can do it on your back. It's just a different exercise. All right. Finishing up, bend the knees. And taking a break from those abs. All right, let's do a quick stretch. Wrists underneath shoulders, knees underneath those hips. Remember to take your head, neck, and pelvis along for the ride when your spine is moving. Okay, so we're in our quadruped, spine straight. You can extend the right leg, doesn't matter which again. And we're gonna make little circles. Sometimes it's hard to make circles when it's behind us. It's like for some reason we just we can't see it, so it's it's weird. But work on keeping your abs nice and tight. The circle is not very big at all. Keep your butt tight, your abs tight, your quads tight. You gotta switch direction. About four or five in each direction. The circle is small and it's within your pelvis, I mean hip range of motion. So your spine shouldn't be moving because, see this shouldn't be happening because the leg is moving so much, okay? All right, let's try the other side. Five in each direction. Let's look down on the floor with the space between our thumbs so that our head and neck is aligned with our spine. And I know you don't have mirrors over there, um, but your, your goal is to have your leg at parallel. Not higher than the hips, not lower than the hips, just that parallel. And then the circle you're making is so small, go ahead and reverse, that you're always within range of parallel. All right, shake out your wrist if you need to. So my next challenge for you is spinal balance. Spinal balance is this. And you can absolutely straighten the leg, right arm, left leg away from each other, and hold, breathing, find stillness. Or you can do circles. All right? So if you're doing circles, is it easier to all move in the same direction or move opposite? You know what? That's a question for you. Uh, do what works for you. There is no right or wrong, okay? I don't even know what I'm doing, but I just know that I want to maintain balance. So I'm going right, left. I don't know what I'm doing. I am making circles. I am moving slightly. Good. And I don't even know if you can tell what direction you're going, but if you can, just reverse it. And three, two, one. Good. Try the other side. We've got about a minute left. So Options are you can lift the opposite limbs and not do the circling. You can also pulse, so that's just the up, down, up, down. So lots of variations here. Now when I'm doing the circling, I am actually, if I'm studying myself, I'm moving out at the same time and in at the same time. Out, in. Circling outward, then inward. And I'm going down, out, up, good, reverse. Actually, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> but luckily I haven't fallen on my face yet. Okay, okay. Find a nice comfortable sitting position. You can sit on your heels, you can sit cross-legged. We're just gonna stretch, lengthen the spine, remind ourselves Pilates is about posture, it's about lengthening, symmetry, balance, good. 
but ultimately it is about posture. We want to try to remember to keep the chest up and our shoulders down and back. 